Hello ladies and gentlemen, the scary season is upon us, and what's better to go with it than a video about scary video games. But of course, it wouldn't be Switch Watch without that good old physical imports twist. So yeah, here are all the Nintendo Switch horror games that are physical imports, i.e. physical Switch games that are only available in Japan, Hong Kong, or other Asian regions, with the added qualifier that they have English, so they are perfect to add to your ghoulish collection. Now I am being a little bit broad with this, just to get all inclusive, it's not necessarily necessarily scary games, but games that have a horror theme to them. Like if they've got a pumpkin with a face on it, it automatically counts as a horror game, okay? And if you can't agree with that, then let's step outside and settle our differences the only way true men can, with the game of Conkers, obviously. But let's stay in Curse of the Moon double pack. Let's start with a classic, Classic Vania. Nothing quite says Halloween like the Hammer Horror inspired retro platformers. And while this isn't Castlevania, this is a fantastic double inspired helping of those great NES games. Yes, these were both released individually via limited run games in North America, but this Japanese double pack is much more convenient and reasonably priced. Probably the best way to get these two excellent games. Blair Witch is a surprising import exclusive from Bloober Team. This is one that most people forget about in their library, maybe because it was based off a film franchise that died a couple of decades ago. But it's certainly unique, and it has an open-ish world where you have a dog which helps guide you. You can't be scared with the dog by your side. What's going on there? Bridge Curse Road to Salvation is a recent enough first-person horror game made in Taiwan and supposedly based off a pretty decent horror movie. This is a game I reviewed for the channel, and it's about a group of students who are trying to take part in an inter-school competition, but maybe in their efforts to create a spooky event, they may have awakened something truly evil. This is a pretty decent game, all things considered, and it's a Play Asia exclusive with a standard and collector's edition still available. Speaking of which, if you want to purchase any of these import exclusives in this list, then please check the links below in the description. If you purchase something after clicking our link, then you massively help support us, so you get a game and you help us out at the same time. Plus, if you click our link, we can support you too with a pretty swell 5% off if you use our discount code SWTV23 when checking out. But please click the link first, that is what helps us. Thanks a lot. The Coma Double Cut is one of the old school import exclusives. This is a double pack of side-scrolling horror games, the first of which did release physically in the West, like super early on in the Switch's life. I didn't like that one, but I did like the sequel, which is only available physically in this double pack import. It released in both Japan and Southeast Asia a bit later, and I think it's worth it since the first game, although flawed, had some great ideas, and the sequel, well, that came good on it. Shall we have a bit of cotton in our lives? You can't have a Halloween without a bit of cotton. This cutesy spook em up is the perfect shooter for a Halloween party by yourself. Shooting pumpkins and weird ghosts with fairies in a fantasy land, it's great. There are a few imports that may take your fancy, even if most of them have a Western release, but in limited quantities. Firstly, there's Cotton Saturn Tribute. This includes Cotton 2 and its remixed version, Cotton Boomerang. Pretty much a different game, though. These were released by Strictly Limited in the West, but uh, yeah, this version is cheaper and more accessible. Cotton 16-bit Tribute is a double pack of Cotton 100% and Panorama Cotton, two 16-bit games from the series. Neither is particularly special, but you know, as a double pack, they come together in an interesting package. Strictly Limited released these individually, but Japan was better. For the same price, they stuck them together on one cartridge. Love Japan. And finally, there is the upcoming Rainbow Cotton. Pre-orders for this have only just opened at Strictly Limited. Games for their Western version, but you know, it's not in danger of selling out just yet. But if you're watching this in the future, the Japanese version may be the way to go. It's already the cheaper option. This is a remake of a Dreamcast game. There are four editions of Dead by Daylight available physically in Japan. The base game is available in the West, but it seems they are mad for it over there since they have these almost DLC-like individual releases of sorts. Firstly, the Silent Hill edition, which includes what you'd expect, the 5th Anniversary Edition, which includes Resident Evil content, Sadako includes Ringu content, and Ultimate Edition, I can't remember what that includes. I'm not overly familiar with the series or how it plays, so I can't give too much information, but as an option for those who can't get enough, you know, it's there. 
Dead Craft is not outwardly a horror game, but it's a zombie survival action game, and that's good enough for me. Here you have to farm the dead to stay alive. The world has been ravaged by a virus, and you have to survive the only way you can by planting the corpses of the undead. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm surprised this only released physically in Hong Kong, since it does have like a Western flavor to the whole thing. But no, only in Hong Kong. Death Road to Canada, another Play Asia exclusive. It was once sold out, but they were awesome enough to give it a second life with a reprint, bringing the secondhand prices down. And good, because this is really a fun survival game that deserves to be played. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're hitting the road to get to the Canadian border, stopping off getting supplies and allies. It's a lot of crazy fun. Devil May Cry Trilogy is a fantastic triple set of classic action games with a slight horror theme to them. This Japanese triple pack seems like a no-brainer, but it's kind of ruined by the fact that only the first game is on the cartridge, while the other two are download codes, which just to add that cherry on top, they've now expired. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't need to say anything about that. Not great. This drink collection is another Play Asia exclusive. This is a double pack of two short but surreal and compelling side-scrolling puzzle games. You get a trippy feeling just looking at the trailer, never mind playing the games. I believe there are some standard editions still available. Dungeon and Gravestone is a mildly horror-themed dungeon crawler, very much a genre I love. Mystery Dungeon. And what a mystery this game is. It doesn't explain anything, it just expects you to go in and find the secrets out for yourself. And I really appreciate that. It's obviously not as classic as something like Azure Dreams, but I found it to be a commendable time. There are two Fatal Frame games on the Nintendo Switch, and if you want them physically, then the Asian versions are the way to go. Fatal Frame Made in a Black Water was the first on the Nintendo Switch, although the latest in the series. I enjoyed this quite a lot. The only issue with the physical is that this one does not have English on the cartridge, it needs to be downloaded, which is a shame. But no shame for Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. This is a remake of a previously exclusive Wii game, and this is fantastic too, and thankfully English does not need to be downloaded, it is fully on the cartridge. Personally for me, these are the two best horror games on the Nintendo Switch, as you defeat ghosts by taking photos of them. It sounds dumb, but it's genuinely unsettling and quite scary. Get Me Out Please is an upcoming import exclusive horror game, in fact it might be out already, depending on when I get this video edited. So at the time, I don't really know a whole lot about it, but it's definitely a horror, I can tell you that. It seems to be the kind where four people work together to escape some kind of stalker. Hopefully I get to review this for the channel, if I haven't already. Ib is a really weird and unsettling horror game. It looks like it's made in RPG Maker, which you'd think would affect how the horror comes across, but no, it works surprisingly well, and I think it's a really great horror game that mixes scares with puzzles and surreal visuals. Definitely don't judge a book by its cover. Comaggio Romelia Scarlet Symphony 1 and 2 are two separate releases, two Toho games that have a Castlevania feeling to them. Not true horror, of course, but something you can add to your playlist around this time, and it would fit right in. Now, the first game was recently done by Limited Run Games in North America, but if you missed that, the Japanese version is cheaper and more accessible. The second game isn't out as of yet, but it will be in December. Get these if you fancy challenging yourself. Kwaidan Azuma Mana Story is a Play Asia exclusive that's getting ready to be sent out soon. This is an old-school action-adventure game from something you'd see during the PS2 era, but it's got a big old dollop of jank, which almost goes hand in hand with the charm that it has. Enter a spooky manner, solve puzzles, and exercise ghouls. Yeah, get them on that treadmill. The Letter is a visual novel with really creepy, scary, uh, scares. I like visual novels, but I wasn't convinced it would do a good job of scaring me but it does. The visuals are fantastic and unnerving, like genuinely creepy, and best of all, it's a pretty huge visual novel, all things considered. It even has voice acting, which is kind of dodgy, but still welcome. This is a Play Asia exclusive. It was sold out, but they reprinted some for those who missed out the first time of asking. But that's not all Play Asia have to offer in terms of exclusive horror visual novels. Saint Maker is their brand new pre-order at the time of writing this video. It's from the same company that made The Letter, and another one that they did, Love Esquire, which is good, but it's not horror. This one obviously has some religious themes to it, so expect the Pope to have a few more tentacles than you'd expect. 
Also, as a bonus, there is a secondary VN in here too. A short, sweet Yuri VN to top off the package. Live stream Escape from Hotel is an Army is a schlocky horror game that's all about the fan service. You are a bunch of live streamers who were invited to a spooky hotel, but when they get there, they find themselves being stalked by a murderous mascot. It's a game of hide and seek, but with panty shots, so uh, yeah, something for everyone. Martian Forest is not a scary game, but it's got the spooky whimsy one needs around Halloween time. Not least because of the adorable character designs, but also because it's an absolute nightmare of a game. I wouldn't say it's good, but it's a drug trip that needs no drugs. It's essentially three unfinished games in one, and I kind of adore it. Never Awake is a fantastic shooter. It's accessible to both casual fans of the genre and hardcore fans. It's got everything I need in a shooter. Loads of content, good, masterable controls, and it takes you on a visual trip. And man, it has some great decrepit nightmarish levels to go through. Loads of boss fights, highly recommended. Obakedoro is a cheeky little game of hide and seek. If Tim Burton made a game of cops and robbers, it would probably look like this. This one is best played with people online, but I'm not entirely sure how populated that is these days, but it is an option. Omen of Sorrow is a horror-themed fighting game. It includes Frankenstein's monster, Imhotep, and stuff like that. It's probably the closest one's going to get to a new Darkstalkers or Killer Instinct this day and age. Again, it's a Play Asia exclusive, and they still have stock left. I believe, even the collector's edition. Onimusha is a horror game with action infused within it. It's essentially a Resident Evil game, but with samurai and yokai instead of cops and zombies. It's a fantastic game that looks and plays even better on the Nintendo Switch. It is a bit short, that surprised me because I forgot how short it was, and it still has some of those earrings of an early PS2 game. But that's good because those are the best games. Red Colony Trilogy, another Play Asia exclusive. This is a triple pack of games in the schlocky and totally not ashamed of it Red Colony series. These are dumb, all about the boobage, all about the ripped clothes. Oh, and there's zombies in here too. Three games in one, side-scrolling Resident Evil likes, and I've heard they are much better than they have any right to be. Remother Double Pack is a convenient double pack of two modern-ish horror games. This is not essential because the games aren't particularly that great, especially on the Switch, and they each got individual releases in the West. But this saves on shelf space, I suppose, and maybe the wallet, you never know. Sense a Cyberpunk Story is another schlocky horror game exclusive to play Asia. This is not a brilliant game, but I liked it, and not entirely down to the comically proportioned ladies within it. No, it's just like an old school adventure game. Find this clue, take it over here, talk to this person. There just so happens to be a ghost story, cyberpunk, and boobs in it. Senses Midnight is a bit of a toned down sequel, less comical, and they totally switched up the gameplay. It's now 3D and is entirely in one small playground environment. Again, it has its issues, but I respect what they were going for. It's also a Play Asia exclusive, and I believe they still have some collector's editions still in stock. Yuoni is a first-person horror game set in multiple environments where you're being stalked. Where have we heard that before? You'll be in a school, an old-style Japanese house, a hospital, your usual suspects. You play as a defenseless 10-year-old girl trying to hide away from the monster. This is not great, but it is super cheap. It's one of the cheapest imports that you can get. Battle Princess Madeline is what happens when an indie developer really misses ghouls and ghosts, like me. I goddamn love the Super Nintendo game, and this tries to be a love letter to that, visuals and all. The actual gameplay isn't as tight or as well thought out, but it is a commendable effort. It's worth noting that this Japanese version is quite quite a bit different from the version that Limited Run did in North America. They did a director's cut of sorts which drastically altered the game, so this one, this Japanese one, is unique to that. Aberembo Tengu, also known as Zombie Nation, is a side-scrolling shooter on the NES. It was super unique for the time because there wasn't much out there like it. You know, a floating zombie head? Alright. The horror themes are quite toned down, as you'd expect, but, you know, just like Cotton, it wouldn't go amiss in your spooky season backlog. Now, Strictly Limited did do this in Europe, but that is long sold out, so the Japanese version may be the way to go. And there we have it, a handful of Switch horror games that are import exclusives with English. If you want to purchase any of them, please use the links below. I would appreciate that. Also, check out my other channel, A Bit More Jordan. Yes, you'll find a lot more me over there. If you like RPGs and retro games, you will love that channel as well. Go check it out. Take care.